Nikola Jokic just did something we have quite literally never seen before. 20 points, 15 plus boards, 15 plus assists, and he didn't miss a single shot. That is the first time that that stat line has ever been put up. We've honestly never seen a game like this, and for whatever reason, nobody's really talking about it, which is kind of the theme with him and this Nuggets team. It feels like, generally speaking, there's a little bit of boredom and people just aren't really that interested in Jokic or the Nuggets in general, which is just crazy to me, not just because of this individual statistical performance, and it's unbelievable the amount of different ways that they're able to use him, the different spots on the floor that he's hitting these shots, how he's finding his teammates, but also he now has had a triple-double against every single other team in the league, other than, of course, the Nuggets. Every opponent that he has ever played against, he has put up at least one triple-double against every single team. And he's only the fourth person in the history of the league to accomplish that feat. Now, I'm not a huge triple-double guy. I don't really care about triple-doubles, right? I know there's Russell Westbrook fans out there talking about, oh my gosh, why are we celebrating Jokic for triple-doubles when we never really cared about triple-doubles with Westbrook? It's just about your overall statistical impact, and Jokic is just on a completely different level than, honestly, anyone else in the league right now. And I'm wondering if we're forgetting this fact. I'm wondering if we're getting bored with Jokic and the Nuggets in general, because if you compare last year's Nuggets that went on to win the title in relatively dominant fashion, an incredible postseason run, they were challenged at times, but not really challenged a ton. If you compare that team, this is mostly the same roster, most of the same guys are still there. That team to this year's team from a statistical perspective, from a record perspective, all these different things, they're basically the same, yet nobody really seems to care. Now, I think part of that is, I don't think this is gonna be a particularly strong end to the season for Denver. And also there's just more interesting stories around the league right now. Denver last year did not finish the year well at all. Uh, they generally looked disinterested in the end of the regular season and it worked out for them. They were healthy going into the postseason. And ultimately they won the title anyway. And the expectation is now, even according to their own head coach, they don't really care about their record towards the end of the year. They just wanna be healthy. And I think that's part of the reason why people aren't that interested in them right now because they're kind of a known commodity and we know that they're maybe not going to put in a hundred percent effort down the stretch of the season and also there's just like up and coming and, and interesting teams there's like what exactly is going to happen in phoenix with all these stars they put together there's oklahoma city figuring it out and become a, a contender there's minnesota coming out of pretty much nowhere to become a contender suddenly there's the clippers that are healthy and exciting and now have james harden there's plenty of other interesting things to talk about in the west but that doesn't mean we should just forget about Jokic and the Nuggets. Because right now, Jokic is on pace and favored to accomplish a feat that not many players in the history of the league ever have. If Jokic wins the MVP this season, which he's the odds on favorite to right now, and it seems like that is where the momentum is going towards now, there's still plenty of time left in the season for that to change. If he was to win the MVP this year, he would join a very, very rare list of players throughout the history of the league that have ever won three plus MVPs. That list includes Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell, Kareem, Moses Malone, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, LeBron, and then if he was to win it, Nikola Jokic. Those are the only players in the history of the league that have won three plus MVPs. And that is an incredibly impressive list to be on, especially when Jokic still has so much time left in his career to accomplish even more. And I think it's distinctly possible that he is still incredibly underrated around the league because as exciting as it is to watch all these perimeter players and these great shooters and these creators, incredible athletes, there's so much talent in the league right now. I would argue that Jokic is the single best source of individual offense in the entire league and they use him in so many different ways as well. For the longest time, the league has gone in the direction of having a dominant perimeter player and having the big guy just set the screen and roll, and that's the best source of offense. It's why most of the league runs exclusively pick and roll now as the framework of their offense, because it's the most efficient thing that we've found, especially when you have an awesome perimeter player. It's impossible to guard, but Jokic has somehow found a way to be even more efficient as an individual player than the most efficient thing that we have in basketball, which is the pick and roll. It's been so efficient that every team in the league basically does it now, and Jokic is better than that. He can be the ball handler in the pick and roll. He can be the screener in the pick and roll. He can work out of the post, high post. You can have him short roll and create. His passing instincts are unbelievable. I would argue that if you want to put together the best offense in the entire league and you ask yourself, who is the player you would like to start with to create that team, to create that offense? I think Jokic is number one on the list. And honestly, 
I don't know that it's all that close. There's unbelievable offensive talent in the league right now, guys like Luca, of course. But in terms of the variability and the different ways it can get accomplished, I don't think anybody in the league has the skill set that Jokic does to fit into any situation and to create an outstanding individual offense on his own. I don't think anybody has that skill set the way that Jokic does. And that, of course, gets showcased in a game in which he has 20, 15 plus, 15 plus, and 100% field goal shooting. Literally did not miss a shot. Now, to be fair, I think sometimes this happens with Jokic where not necessarily that he cares about the stats, but that he just kind of tries stuff it's like larry bird shooting with his left hand right like he just goes out there and he's like you know what i think tonight i'm gonna try and not miss i'm gonna not be as aggressive with my shots and i'm just gonna try and not miss i'm gonna pass the ball a ton i'm gonna be awesome on the boards and i'm not saying that in a negative way certainly i think it's actually a positive for him it just shows how incredibly skilled and dominant he is that he can pick and choose on a night-to-night -night basis kind of how he wants to impact the game but i do think it's something that happens and i think it's something that probably happened in this game we've seen this with him before where he will just literally not shoot the ball he will have games like this where he's like eight for eight or eight for ten or something from the field and just not really look at the rim and again not a negative i think it's just a showcase of how unbelievably dominant he is and basically the point of all this is just to say let's not forget about Nikola Jokic. let's not take him for granted let's not take for granted the fact that we have an all-time great offensive player in the league and honestly we have a ton of those guys right now i mean it feels like we have a handful of all-time generational offensive players in the nba right now which calls into question the term generational in the first place if there's so many of them but it feels like of all the guys around the league that get celebrated all the time guys like luca uh, bron of course still at such a at like an advanced age still being as good as he is all these guys i feel like Jokic is the one that we are just kind of the most bored with it's not particularly flashy he's not dunking on guys but he is just so unbelievably effective and compared to his peers, compared to Giannis, compared to Embiid, it feels like Jokic gets talked about the least, yet he's on the way to potentially three plus MVPs already in his career. I think part of the reason why maybe we don't talk about him a ton is just because, yeah, it's not super aesthetically pleasing, but also everything is just very stable in Denver. Like they add pieces around Jokic and Murray and, and Michael Porter Jr. on a year to year basis, but they're just kind of the same team and they show up and they're really good and they guard and they make shots and they have Jokic and it's just like there's nothing new there's nothing new to talk about here but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't talk about it at all I definitely think that a 20-15-15 and 100% field goal shooting game is worth talking about I definitely think that him having a triple double against every team that he's ever played against is worth talking about I definitely think that the possibility of him having three plus MVPs at this point in his career is worth talking about as well as the fact that they are absolutely still in my opinion a top two or a top three contender for the NBA title this season and when you combine the individual success of potential MVPs along with the possibility of winning not just the title this year but presumably they're going to be in the hunt to win an NBA title for years and years and years now the possibility of Nikola Jokic is like a top five all-time great needs to be definitely discussed and at the forefront of our minds.